hello. Welcome to another series on Unstoppable Stories. And I'm excited to introduce our newest storyteller. Um, I love spotlighting women's stories. Um, and, it, you know, when they can speak about feeling unstoppable, um, we all at times feel like we are just ready to throw in the towel, that things are just too hard, too much. And so hearing other people's stories, I think really does give us a, a some, you know, wind beneath our wings. Um, it helps us to stay inspired and follow the personal development that can make us all unstoppable. If you're hearing banging in the background, that's because I got workmen in the house. We're just going to go with it, Amber. <laughs> so, Definitely. I get it. It is, it is just going on in my life right now. Anyhow, this is Amber Wolfolk, and she is a dear person who has many, many talents. Um, I love that you've taken your, your passion, something that was a hobby and a love of yours, and turned it into a business. And Amber refers herself as the pretty painter, and that's not hard to imagine. You're beautiful. Oh, thank you, Sherry. So she loves doing small projects, and it could be a bigger project of painting and as a color specialist, and I, I think you've got a, a real flair for design. So that's who Amber is in professionally, and let's hear an unstoppable story, Amber. Hi, Sherry. So thank you for having me. Um, and giving me an opportunity to share my story, especially as we enter Women's Month in March, right? So this is this is um, this is our time. This is our year. And so, just a little bit of information about the Pretty Painter. Pretty Painter was established about 15, 20 years ago. I didn't really know it, but when I bought my first home and I and I had small children, I needed to paint our house and me and my husband at the time decided to tackle it ourselves. And so he was painting and I was painting and I realized that he didn't like to paint, but I love to paint. I love to bring life to the space and, and make sure that the, the paint colors that we chose match the personalities of our family and our children so that we had spaces that, um, so that our home ex exuded who we were. And so um, over the years, I picked up different projects for um, large companies and friends and family. They would come in and they would see our home and they'd say, oh, my goodness, you can paint. Who painted this? And I'm like, I painted it myself. And um, it led to opportunities for me to build additional, well, extra income to bridge the gap. And when I lost my I lost my job back in 2016 and I decided to take it on a little bit more serious Mm -hmm. And recently with the pandemic, it's been helpful even more. So not being, I lost my job back in September and I decided to pick the paintbrush back up. And I have been able to, to take on contracts monthly that help me keep a roof over me and the kid's hot head and make it where I don't really, if, if unemployment doesn't ever show up or if I don't get hired at a livable wage, I can still make sure that we can keep things going for my family. Mm -hmm. And so I've been painting um, like small condominiums, business off office suites for women that have um, decided to go out and start their companies, or they may have their business in place and they've received funds from the government to do the improvements. Right. Well, if you're going to do that, hire a woman to do the improvements, right? How many times I, what I realized is that there was a, a weird space where if your project is too small, they don't want it. Right. And if it's too big, you can't, many can't afford it. Like larger projects, most, most women or moms or women in business is just too expensive. And so what I do is I come in and I help you get the work done within budget in a timely manner and in a non-threatening manner. Because sometimes contractors will come in and they'll sell you something you don't need or they'll overcharge you because you don't know. And so the pretty painter is the woman's painter. My clients are women in business. They may be single moms. They may be older women who just, you know, need someone to move some things and paint a small space for them. Um, 
maybe a, a single a single woman who doesn't really want a lot of men in her space while she's at home working alone. Yeah. Um, there's a trust factor there for me. Um, and I specialize in color selection and color correction. So color selection is all about making sure that your colors align with your brand, your personality and your lifestyle. Your, your space should align with your business the clients that you want to work with and the energy that you want to have around you so that you can be energetic and motivated throughout the day, especially if you're working from home. I think that's super important because people are, you know, have moved to working at home such a huge, that's such a huge percentage. And so it's a great time to spruce up and, and literally focus on how the room makes you feel and how you want it, how you want it to make you feel. And color can definitely do that. I really love, I, I want to hear, um, before we wrap this up, I want to hear like what went through your mind when you lost your job, because that's that unstoppable part where you could have like buried yourself under a bunch of pillows and cushions and just said, you know, what am I going to do? My unemployment hasn't come in. I don't have, uh, you know, an income, but I mean, I've heard you talk about, I mean, you really have grit. You, you figure out, you just said this before we started recording, that you're looking for what's available, you know, your, your arms are open to receive. And I'd love for you to talk just a minute about that. So when I lost my job, um, I lost it in September, like literally right before the holiday season at the end of September. And, um, and one, let's, let's put, let's put things in perspective. It's almost March. I lost my job in September. I have yet to receive any unemployment. And so you have to have grit and hustle and grind and say, you know what? I still have to make a way as a mom, as a woman. They say almost 3 million women have left the workforce because we've had to make a decision. I shouldn't have to decide. And see, I don't have smaller children. I have older teenagers and college students. I can't have my daughter unenrolled because I lost my job. My son can't stop. Like he's in 11th grade. They have needs. And so for me to be able to meet those needs, I have to get out and work. If that means evenings and weekends, I need to do that. And so um, when it first happened, I did want to bury my head. And I might have cried for the first two or three days because I just couldn't believe that it happened to me. Like, I'm too smart. I'm, you know, I'm me. Like, how did that happen to me? Right. right. But why not you? You think you're, you know, three million other women have, either lost their job or walked away because they had to decide what was best for their families. Yeah. And so what was best for me and my family was flexible opportunity and unlimited earning potential. Now, because there are contracts and they're one off, they're like odd jobs. I'm doing like odd jobs that, you know, the money may, may be there. It may not, but I decide, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the more I promote, the more I make phone calls and make connections I was able to decide when I work and when I don't. Um, And so everybody doesn't have that. And if you have a skill set and you you're not doing something with it in the middle of all this, I've always said shame on you. So it's like if you knew you could do something and you didn't, I couldn't just sit by and allow things to unravel further. Well, that's Um, the that's the unstoppable spirit. And I hope that that somebody listening to this is going to be inspired to take something that they know that they do. You know, sometimes we think the things that come so easy to us, we shouldn't charge for them because they come so easy to us. But that's the thing. They don't come easy to other people. And so what what someone can do well, they can create a business for it. And you've just proven that. So thank you for sharing. That was that was like the perfect unstoppable story. You are. Well, I heard you talk. I thought, oh, my gosh, I've got to interview you because you've got that spirit about you. Well, thank you, Sherry. So good for you. Good and for I you. am unstoppable. I, I really do feel like I'm unstoppable. <laughs> it's weird, but I mean, it's not weird, but it is. No, it's. Uh, you have to, I wake up and I know that I have to get up and make it happen. 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. When those wheels start turning, I get up and I try to figure out who has the opportunity today? Who do I need to connect with? Who is my ideal client or who has access to that ideal person who may need, who doesn't know that they have a need? Right. Yeah. And, and simply having that mindset that you're going to attract and, and find those opportunities 
-hmm. because, because that's what you're looking for, because that's what you're asking for. So again, good for you. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for having me.